Welcome to Poland Daily. Uh, today we'll speak about China with a um, distinguished guest, uh, Benedict Rogers, the author of the book China Nexus uh, in Polish. It's Hiska Sieć Zła, and that's, that's the copy. So welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you, it's great to be with you. So you said uh, worrying information about the uh, secrecy of the confession. Um, on what basis and what is Vatican saying about that? So it's on the basis that this new security law has a clause that says uh, anybody who knows of another individual who has either committed a crime under the security law or, or has the intention to do so must report uh, at that individual and failure to do so could result in 14 years in prison. And the Secretary for Justice, actually I call him the Secretary for Injustice, but um, in the Hong Kong government, was asked uh, specifically uh, uh, whether um, confession would be exempt from this uh, uh, requirement. And he essentially said no. Um, and so that raises a lot of questions. Now, the, um, we organized a statement signed by 16 uh, experts in uh, religious freedom around the world, including George Weigel, the biographer of St. John, John Paul II. Um, and following our statement, the uh, Catholic Diocese in Hong Kong issued a statement saying they would uphold uh, the confidentiality of confession. But the Vatican itself has not said anything, and that's very concerning to me. Well, generally, the position the Vatican adopts towards China is dubious, so yeah. to speak. How do you assess this thing? I, Why I, uh, are they doing it? Um, so I've been very disappointed and, and very critical of the Vatican's position. I think um, they are doing it for two reasons. Um, one is um, a, in my view, somewhat naive uh, uh, hope that they can normalize the status of the Catholic Church uh, in, in China and, and give it uh, better protection and, and protect religious freedom. That's a noble objective, but I think um, uh, they're going about it in the wrong way. But the other motivation, I believe, is that um, uh, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, as a Jesuit, has a particular sort of romantic um, uh, uh, love of Matteo Ricci and Matteo Ricci's ability to influence the Chinese imperial court, you know, several hundred years ago. And perhaps he thinks he can do the same with the Chinese Communist Party. I'm not sure if you're aware of the person called Michal Boim. That was the 16th century uh, cleric from Lvov who actually emigrated to China and uh, was one of the first who translated the books on medicine and so on so that into right. Chinese and, and the, the, well, it's kind of interesting thing because he was yes. Polish Jesuit in China in the very early period of the more uh, uh, close relationship with, with the China. Yeah, he actually was um, during the, the wars uh, when, the, when the Tang dynasty was giving up to the Mongols he was sent as an ambassador to uh, to Rome, and he was traveling with in a formal dress of the Chinese uh, ambassador. Right. Right. <laughs> but obviously, the, the the Pope failed to help at that time. Anyway, um, the the relationships between uh, um, so-called Western Christianity and uh, and Chinese government are are. Well, obviously, because they are communists, right? But we thought that they are giving, they stepping back. They, they are giving the religion room to, to grow. Why now they are sort of tightening the grip? You're absolutely right. There was a period in the 90s and early 2000s where there, was, there appeared to be a little bit more space for religion. And under Xi Jinping, they have really cracked down. And I think it's all part of Xi Jinping's uh, uh, in desire to really intensify um, his control o over the country. So what we've seen in regard to churches, both Catholic and Protestant, um, is that uh, they have come under pressure to, for example, show uh, portraits of Xi Jinping in the church uh, instead of religious uh, imagery display Chinese Communist Party propaganda. Taking uh, down banners, crosses from the tops crosses, of the buildings. Exactly, yeah. and, and quite a lot of church buildings have actually been destroyed. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a total crackdown. Right, what is the general idea, or 
how do you under, how do you understand the general idea of Xi Jinping and and CCP? Why they are doing what they do? I think a combination of reasons. Firstly, uh, the turning point I think was around um, 2008, um, so predating Xi Jinping, um, when I think the Chinese Communist Party having allowed a period of opening and relaxation where there was some space for civil society, for uh, independent bloggers, for, for religious practice, limited space, but, but some space. I think in 2008, uh, after the Beijing Olympics, they felt, first of all, that they had got what they wanted from the rest of the world in terms of recognition and, and status. But secondly, um, they were uh, worried by um, the dissent that the, the period of relaxation had resulted in. So there was a movement called Charter 08, which demanded democracy. The Nobel laureate Liu Xiaobo, who then died in, in prison. Um, and at the same time, I think the Chinese regime was also alarmed by the various color revolutions that were going on in other parts of the world. So that, that led to the initial crackdown. Xi Jinping has intensified it uh, considerably. And I think that's because he approaches it from a much more ideological uh, standpoint than some of his predecessors.